it's Nikki, a sewing blogger at SewUpRising.com and designer at Sew Uprising Patterns. Today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about how to put buttonholes in knit garments using your automatic buttonhole foot on your sewing machine, easy and painless. Sewing buttonholes on knit garments is something that I hear people avoid all the time. Anytime I try to talk to someone about a buttonhole foot, their first response is, heck no. I will do snaps, I will switch it to elastic, I will do anything to avoid the buttonhole. But I promise, they're really not that scary. And there are a few easy tips and tricks that I can share with you to make it so much simpler. The first tip, practice. Do it over and over and over again. If you're in a sewing rut and you don't know what else to do, get out some scrap pieces of fabric and make a buttonhole. Who cares if it doesn't turn out right if it's not on the garment you want it to be on, right? Practice, practice, practice. My first buttonholes were awful too. I promise, but it gets so much easier. The second tip is stabilize. Stabilize, stabilize, stabilize. I'm gonna show you in just a minute the whole process of sewing a buttonhole, and there's a little tip in there that is going to change your buttonhole experience altogether. But trust me, stabilize. Practice and stabilize and you can sew any buttonhole on any garment ever. Before we get started, let's talk about the tools you are going to need to sew a perfect buttonhole with your automatic buttonhole stitch on your machine. The big key to doing buttonholes is to have a good amount of stabilization on your fabric. So I like to start with some SF 101 interfacing. I'm going to leave this guy over here which I'm going to apply to one side of my button band fabric, which is this one here. <laughs> Cute. Guess you sewed through a finger this morning. That'd be me. <laughs> You're also going to need the automatic button holder foot for your machine. This is the one I have. It's for my basic Singer machine. You are, of course, going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need the button that you're going to want to eventually put on your garment. You're going to need some pins, a seam ripper, and then this is my secret weapon over here, wash away stabilizer. So this is an embroidery stabilizer. I buy it from Amazon. I buy it in bulk rolls because I go through quite a bit of it. And it makes all the difference in sewing a perfect buttonhole. The thing I am going to do is I'm going to take my fabric here that I'm going to be applying my button band to. I'm going to go to my iron. I'm going to press it in half to create a nice seam, or seam, uh, crease is the word, right here in the middle. And then I'm going to apply interfacing to just one half of this button band. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll be right back. My interfacing is applied. Here's what it should look like when you're all said and done. I am just using a scrap piece of fabric, so it's not totally the right shape for a button band, but... You'll see the right side is pressed out. There's a nice sharp crease going down the outside. When you open it up, that interfacing is just on the one side. Now when we go on to sew our buttonhole, we want to be careful that we are keeping this half that has the interfacing up. So we want the non-interface side against the bottom of the machine to be able to be grabbed by the feed dogs. And then this is going to be our top. If you do it the other way around, you're gonna have some feeding issues and you might end up with a wonky buttonhole. So interfacing side goes up, non-interfacing side will be on the bottom. So in order to get started sewing the actual buttonhole, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is swap out the regular presser foot that I use, which is just a clear one, basic, came with my machine, works good, no need for anything fancy, with the buttonhole foot that came with our machine. So it should look something like this. It's big, it's plastic, it looks a little weird if you don't know what it's for. But before we install it, we are going to open the edge here. This is where the button goes. And then we're going to put, ah, slippery little button, our button in there. And it should rest nicely in between here. Having this button in here is what is going to tell our machine what size buttonhole we want it to make. I will say that if you're using a cheap Singer one like me, it is very possible that your button is going to fall out of your buttonhole foot at some time during your buttoning journey. 
especially if you're doing multiple buttonholes in a row, it may happen. So just make sure you are keeping an eye out on the back of your foot to make sure that button is still there. So let's go ahead and swap this out. Oh. All right, so there we are. You can see my buttonhole foot is now attached to my machine and I've set my other button or my other buttonhole foot, my regular presser foot off to the side and making sure our button is still very much in the back there. We're going to want to keep checking on that throughout the process. The other really important step about sewing a buttonhole is that you're going to want to make sure the buttonhole lever, this little guy way back here, on your machine. I'll insert a picture of it here in case you can't tell from this angle. But you want to make sure that that is pulled down and that it is resting comfortably in between the two edge points of the buttonhole presser foot. That will tell your machine when you want it to turn around to start the other half of the buttonhole. I think with that we are about ready to get started. So. Let's do this. I'm going to select which size buttonhole you want. So on my machine, I have two different options here. Uh, one is just a little wider. One is just a little narrower. For the sake of this, we are going to do a little wider one. And I am not going to play with my machine settings up here. I'm going to let the machine do what it wants there. It knows best in this instance. I'm going to come back down here. I'm going to use my seam ripper because it's a small little spot to try to help guide my thread ends out from under my presser foot because that's what good sewists do who follow the rules, right? It's okay, I don't do it all the time either, but for the sake of the video, we're gonna follow the rules. <laughs> Threads are pulled out. And we're gonna take a small piece of our wash away stabilizer. You can just see I cut a strip about as wide as my buttonhole foot. We're gonna lay that on the back of our button band on the outside. So here we have the top, this is the right side of the fabric. Flip it over, you should have the in interface piece, the wrong side of the back of the button band, and then the stabilizer. That is really important. I usually just cut one big long piece that'll go throughout my whole button band so I don't have to stop. But you can see my fabric, which is a good poly knit blend fabric, now has next to no stretch, which is perfect for what we want here. I'm going to put that under my foot. Now, if I was doing this on a real button band, I would have some markings going down here that would tell me where I want to align this red marking here of my buttonhole foot to start the buttonhole itself. Since this is just one to show you how it is, I don't have any markings here, but just know that this little red marking, you're going to want to line up right with exactly where you want the bottom of your button band to be. So the machine is actually going to sew the buttonhole going this way and then come back. So the red dot is the bottom of your button band. Very important. You don't want to go the other way. I'm going to head and start my machine. You do have to keep the presser foot pressed the entire time. And I actually find it helpful to hold on to the edges of my fabric and kind of give it a slight tug as I'm sewing. The slightest tug will work here. Just a little bit of pressure to help keep it moving and it makes it go much smoother. So let's sew a buttonhole. <laughs> took about 30 seconds and let's see what our final result is. Pull it out. I got my scissors here. 
They're never quite where you want them to be. Give it a good snip, front and back. Oh, <laughs> you tell I was lazy, I didn't change my bobbin thread. But we flip it back over, and this is what we have. I definitely need to go back and snip some threads, but look at that. Painless, fairly easy. You can also see down at the bottom where the machine backed up a little bit before it started the buttonhole. And that was so that it could get aligned with that red dot there. So just know it will bounce back a little bit. All right, and now for the part that really scares people, opening a buttonhole. It's a really easy trick that is gonna make this a lot smoother. And all you really need is a nice little straight pin. So you wanna take it, you wanna put it under, back over, and then under, right at the top of your buttonhole. See that? And then, when we take our handy friend, the seam ripper, you can start, we'll put it in right at the bottom here push it through the fabric, through all the layers, including the stabilizer. You can see it pushing fairly hard. And look at that. The pin stopped. No, I can't go any farther. And I can't accidentally cut through the top of my buttonhole. You can then take a pair of thread snips and trim up in there if you'd like. Usually with a narrow buttonhole, you don't need to, but with something thick like this, you definitely might. And there you have my quick and easy tutorial for sewing knit buttonholes easy and quickly. If you have any questions, feel free to get a hold of me at sewuprising.com or to email sewuprising at outlook.com with any questions. I'd be happy to help make your buttonhole journey a little bit smoother. Until then, happy sewing!